Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about slightly more complicated lectures or presentations. And the key thing that makes a presentation in Collaborate for me complicated versus non-complicated um, at the baseline. I mean, if you, if you interleave lots of breakout groups and polls and stuff like that, your lecture can get kind of complicated. But, but here I'm speaking primarily at a technical level. And the key thing is, for me, the difference between a simple and a complex uh, presentation in Collaborate is whether I can do the presentation like this, like we were doing before within Collaborate by uploading a PDF or a PowerPoint, or whether I have to use screen sharing or, or window sharing. And it's window sharing introduces a new level of, of trickiness to su doing successful presentations. One nice thing about the scenario, the, the simple scenario is that it's actually quite easy for me to manage my collaborate session. If somebody's chatting, I see it here, they can do the hand raise and it's, it's all within the same view. I have a nice view here. I can do a uh, person attendee management. Um, in, in general, it, it just is sort of native collaborate. And so it's no surprise that things work easier. Um, also, this is probably the most efficient, from a bandwidth perspective, way to do it. Um, if you have all the students turn off their audio and their their speaking audio and video, that is, you don't allow them to share their audio or share their video, and you don't show your video, then the only thing that you're pushing upstream, that is, that's coming from your computer out into the cloud, is your audio. And that's relatively efficient. It's comparatively small. When you share your screen <coughs> or you have your video going, you're pushing, you know, full, full, full scale video. Um, and that's pretty bandwidth intensives uh, going up. Now going down, it's the same. But of course, when you're sharing your screen, uh, it's going up and back. And so it can really overload your system. So really the lightest way footprint you can have is to upload the presentation and just use audio. But however, sometimes this isn't enough. So for example, if you if you are using a presentation format, which is not PowerPoint, like say Keynote, um, and your Keynote is complicated, it might have, uh, for example, you know, kind of critical, this is for me, this presentation, it was it was critical to the um, flow of the presentation that that I, I started with I started with one versions of the schema with some arrows explaining some stuff and then I knocked something out to explain what would happen. Now at this level this is actually quite simple and what I did to make this work natively in Collaborate, I went and edited my slides, instead of before it was using within a slide animation and I just changed that so that each I have actually different slides and so each slide transition is what does the animation rather than within within a slide animation. So that's something you can do, but there are cases where you can't even do that. So if you have something, so this is a very simplistic example that I threw together. If you have something where you have following a path animation or you know something like that to show a process or something dynamic like that, where it's, it's, it's really a little movie, then you need to use your native uh, your native presentation software to do it. The other time, uh, you might want to demo something. So for example, if you have a program that you want to show, um, you know, like a plot, um, or you have a Jupyter notebook. So here I want to demonstrate a bit of interactive fiction and how the program works. Again, I, I, I don't want to turn it into a uh, bunch of slides. I could, that would be a lot of work. I just want to show what's going on in the screen. Maybe I want to go over and do some live coding to help them get a feel for it. All this, I need to share some aspect of my screen. Okay, so how does this work? So I'm gonna stop sharing the file. Sorry, my. And I'm gonna to go to share application screen. Now, this window here will look different in different browsers. In Firefox, it's it's a bunch of, it's a drop down menu alone, but basically, you will have two choices. You will be able to share your entire screen 
or you'll be able to share a particular application or, or in this case, a Chrome tab. There's some advantages to sharing a particular application rather than your whole screen. Um, first of all, it means that you don't have to worry about exposing anything else. Uh, so if you have, uh, if you've forgotten to close your, your mail program, um, you don't have to worry about that. It is a little bit more convenient. It's closer to what you had before. You could, if your window's smaller than your background tab, you can see what's going on. You can still get at the chat and stuff like that very easily. Just all part of the danger of full screen sharing. So I think that's pretty good. And that can be interleaved with the within collaborate presentation software if you want to go break out and do a little bit of live coding or a demo or a graph or something like that. Uh, it, it, it's not that hard to switch back and forth between and you have to jump around, jump through a few hoops to get there, but it's not that bad. However, if you're trying to do a full screen presentation, it's not enough to share your window. You need to share your whole screen. And that's where things get a little bit complicated. So I'm going to share my screen now. select the screen. So that's the first thing that I just find super annoying. It's <laughs> you get that little infinite regress, um, but that's fine. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to give my presentation. And now herein lies the other problem. I can't see anything from the collaborate. So if people are asking questions it almost forces them to use audio. So I strongly recommend if you're going to do this kind of setup, sharing your full screen for your full presentation, let me hide this for a moment, is that you have a co-instructor or a TA be there if they're not already, or, or just, you know, a friend, if they're not already a moderator, make them a moderator and let them jockey the managing the questions and so forth. Cause they can just pop in with audio if you need to. Of course, you can also just have a second device which is what I'm doing right now. So the co-instructor or PI is actually an iPad. I've done it with my phone. And so if you have two screens, then the fact that your screen was taken over uh, isn't, isn't as big a problem and you can manage it pretty well, but it takes a little practice in my experience. So that's the more complicated kind of presentation that you can do in Collaborate. <coughs> Sorry, that's not COVID-19, uh, just a cough. Um, and I think it's quite workable, but it's probably not to be preferred. If you can dumb down your presentation a little, if you can make it a bit simpler, if you can convert it into a PDF, from many perspectives, that will just work a lot smoother. Thanks.